you think? Sure, it's a great question. So for us, uh, again, it's data driven. Um, and to echo what David said, I don't think there's any argument that cannabidiol CBD is anti-inflammatory. Um, there's clinical models, there's animal models, there's uh, preclinical models um, across the spectrum that support its anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, and in skin, you know, obviously for acne, it has an inflammatory angle to it. For dermatitis, there's an inflammatory angle. For psoriasis, for rosacea, for a number of other skin diseases, that particular property is very relevant. Um, it's probably inarguable that uh, cannabidiol is also antimicrobial. It kills bacteria. So it's very effective at killing P. acnes, which is relevant to acne. Uh, it's very effective in killing uh, Staph aureus uh, and even MRSA, which are both relevant to AD and uh, to psoriasis. So they're kind of two mechanisms of action that are, that are particularly relevant for our skin disease. What we've also found, which is really interesting, is that uh, in the acne area, um, cannabidiol seems to have a, a sebaceous gland effect. So the sebaceous gland is the thing that sits off the edge of the hair follicle. It's the thing that overproduces oil that eventually forms acne in, in uh, conjunction with that fibrosis. Now, there's good evidence, and we have generated clinical evidence ourselves in a phase 1b study to show that it has uh, an anti-sebaceous gland effect. It actually slows down the mechanism of production of those oils as opposed to shutting off the mechanism in the same way as an Accutane or a Roaccutane would do. Um, the other really interesting thing, and, and kind of hasn't been mentioned yet in terms of the function of CBD, uh, is it has immune modulating effects. So across a range of different diseases, it's been shown to have an effect on particular cytokines. So cytokines that are relevant to allergic disease, uh, particularly IL-4, IL-13, IL-33. Um, but it also has some uh, gene modulating effects as well. Uh, so it actually stops the cycle of the body attacking itself and particularly the skin barrier in diseases like dermatitis and psoriasis. So because this molecule has so many particular uh, or potential uses, it really is a miracle drug. Um, the really cool thing about it is it doesn't seem to have side effects, certainly serious side effects, but even in our experience and usage uh, in phase two in dermatology diseases, it doesn't cause irritation, it doesn't cause redness, it doesn't cause peeling, and it does have a positive effect on skin tone and restoration of the skin barrier. So, you know, just like David said, I think there is an enormous amount of evidence out there about the particular functions or, or the way in which the drug works in different diseases. And it's not simply a, it's a CB1 or a CB2 receptor, right? In each disease, you need to understand what the drug does. You obviously need to run well-controlled clinical studies to show that, but the mechanism of what the drug does is different in each disease. Uh, and that's obviously where the IP comes from, but it's also where the differentiation comes from in terms of the mechanism of that drug in that particular disease state.